a family member and I were talking earlier on about where does it end? Where do you draw the line? If someone's shown you that they wish bad for you and that they they seem to just tolerate you, that, that's the impression they want to give to you. Where do you draw the boundary line between not having anything to do with them but still being civil? Because the Lord has made sure that he's placed us in positions where a lot of us, the narcissistic relationships that we encounter, we can't just escape them. We can't just grey rock and go no contact. It's not that easy. And the Lord's deliberately made it that way. And I'm a person, I have a fear of being around people that I know wish me bad. I don't want to get into any, I don't want to fall into their traps because they often, <laughs> they'll often lay traps and snares so that they can, they're aware that you're aware of what they've done and who they are. And they will lay traps for you so that, uh, right, okay, let me start again. I'm the sort of person, if I see something, if I, I'm, I'm the one that will call things out. So I'm the one that will say, that wasn't, yeah, but that's not what you meant. I saw what you did and that wasn't nice. Or I'm not just going to be one of the people that just sit there quietly and I'm just not going to do that. I just wasn't wired that way. I'm older now. I'm not stupid. And I know when to hold my peace and say nothing. But at the same time, I, I'm i not afraid to speak up if it's necessary. OK, so that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about somebody that's trouble, somebody that likes to jump in and a busybody, someone that likes to put their two cents in and make a bad situation worse. I'm not talking. I'm not that person and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, and if you're familiar with my other videos, then you'll know. I'm talking about when you, I, I didn't always know, but I know now, obviously, especially since I've been born again for so many years. We are the salt and light of the earth. Okay, I'm going to keep this very biblical. Holy Father, I just invite you in right now with the Holy Spirit so that you can do the talking. Please let me just be the mouthpiece. I am the clay and you are the potter. Thank you, Holy Lord Jesus. In your name I pray. Please let this be fruitful and edifying for those that are watching. Uh, let the Holy Spirit speak. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay. We are called to be the salt and light of the earth. And people don't like that. They don't want you to bring flavour. Salt stings and it gets rid of that which is ill and, and sick and it cures like how it kills meat and it, it cleanses and again yeah, it brings flavor okay you it so and a lot of people don't they like things to just be bland or to pretend that it's flavorsome when it's not uh, and i hope you can read into that metaphor the light is easier for us to understand because light exposes and light shows up everything around it for what it truly is and at this stage of my life and being through the things that I have and being aware of the things that I am, such as we are dealing with spirits. OK, it's a spiritual war. We battle not against flesh and blood, Ephesians 6, 12, but against spiritual wickedness, against spiritual entities that are entering those that do not have the spirit of God and dwelling within them because light and dark cannot occupy the same space. So if the Holy Spirit is there, you've got you stand a better chance. And I don't mean people that call themselves Christian. I mean the Holy Spirit, born again in the spirit. But I just don't want to be in position. I don't want to be in situations where people set me up to react so they can point the finger, so they can justify their horrible ways or whatever it is they feel. I just don't care. I just want them to get on with it. And I don't. And the Lord has put us in positions where we have relationships that we can't just escape easily. And he's done that deliberately in order to grow us and in order I've said before you are either a blessing to others those that accept who you are in Christ you know those who accept you you who God made you to be or you are you're, you're either a blessing to people or their judgment so and remember how they treat you is how they treat God and that can sound so narcissistic to people that don't understand but the Lord said, whatever you did to the, to the least of one of these, you did for, for me. 
and he said touch my not my anointed so if you are anointed by god with the holy spirit once you have the holy spirit indwelling within you then you are that light that god said not to place under a bushel but to place in a lampstand high for all to see but when you do that you see the sh shadows that are being cast all the shadows appear if there's any dark if there's any anything dirty grubby it's going to be shown it's the light's going to show it up i mean think of a uv light that's even worse that really shows up everything <laughs> okay well that's what we're like we are like real light the brightest light you could ever imagine because it's the light of christ that indwells within us so that's just repelling to a lot of people so because they cannot hide the truth of matters whatever that matter may be they will try to discredit you they cannot discredit the truth so they will try to discredit you they will try to assassinate your character i'm at a stage in my life where i want to forgive and i try my best to forgive and i do pray for my enemies especially those that uh, were a part of, of my life but or are even because again the lord has made it so that we can't just these people can't just uh, you know we can't just escape them but sorry but i don't want to go through cycles with these people all the time i'm not prepared i have to have my boundaries up so as much as i forgive people so that's what i want to talk to you about forgiving and being authentic and understanding why you need to have a boundary because first of all a lot of us we're trying to well we are we're trying we're, it's an ongoing process it's an everyday act of it's a it's a willful act to forgive others but a lot a lot of us are in a process a lot of us in positions where we're, expect, where we're expected to sit down and bake, break bread with these people but i want to give you the example the lord dropped into my spirit i want to give you the example of the lord when he was um when he was betrayed by judas they were at the, they were they were sitting down breaking bread the unleavened bread and they were they were having a meal together a very important meal it was the last meal they'd ever share and the lord it was at that point that the that satan entered judas and the lord told him go and do that which you must do quickly but remember before that he announced at that table that one of them would betray him and what the Lord showed me was whenever the whenever he whenever he went whenever Jesus went to have dine with anyone whenever he was invited to dine and it was usually quite important people that he was invited to dine with he never just decided okay I'm just going to be cool this evening I'm not I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to enjoy the meal and and their hospitality and I mean I'm sure there were many times that he did do that but were there are there I I, I believe that the, the people that he did okay let me just finish what I was going to say and then I'll say that. So he would, what we can see of the Lord is whenever he did go into these people's homes and he was dining with them, he didn't, th he didn't think that. He didn't think, well, I'm just going to keep quiet and keep cool and I'm not going to um, say anything. I'm just going to enjoy the hospitality, enjoy the wine and the food and say, thanks for that, bye. He didn't do that. He would often say very controversial things and make everyone feel very uncomfortable. And I, I mean, I've played it out in my mind. I can see people like at that dinner table like, did he just say that to John? Did he did he really just say that to and looking at each other like or those that were just continue drinking their drink, pretending they didn't hear it? <laughs> because Jesus was very controversial and that's what he was about. He would use the opportunity to call people out with through parables and whatnot. And I can imagine just his presence alone made an impact just like chosen ones because that light that is that christ is and was at that time is powerful we now have that light residing in what us what the lord was I, I was interacting with the lord as i do and i was discussing with him in my spirit with his spirit that is in me being in a situation where you have to be around people that have hurt you and i'm the sort of person if i do not relish being around people that have hurt me and i'm talking i don't mean being offended and someone didn't mean to offend you and you've taken it to heart and you're being over, over you really are being oversensitive 
and or continuing something on having a spirit of resentment or bitterness i don't mean anything like that i'm talking about being around people that have deliberately sought to hurt you and to diminish you in narcissistic in psychology it's called to erase you um so through acts of ostracism or i mean i don't even want to go into all of that now because anyone familiar with that topic will understand the gaslighting things like that feigning ignorance and this, just having this easy breezy attitude to things i i i don't really want to be around people that are not authentic with me and that i cannot be authentic with and as much as we are called to be forgiving we do need to get a grip and perspective on what forgiveness is. Many of us are trying to forgive people that do not even seek any forgiveness from us. They don't even believe they've done anything wrong. So first of all, that doesn't make it easy because it's not like someone is saying to you, please forgive me and acknowledging their wrongs and taking accountability and responsibility for an action or their part in things. Or We're talking about people that have done many insidious little acts, kept prodding at you to get a reaction we're talking about people that want to place you into a trap, a snare, into a position so that and knowing that you're the type of person that will call things out. Because we usually are the people that I am talking to, like the example I gave of Jesus. They will call things out. They will just say things as they see it. They are just naturally for others or f speak the truth. And that's a problem to many. So. I'm talking about those people that people that don't like that and that know they're put, placed in a position where they know you're going to speak the truth. They want to set you up to make it look like you are the guilty party. It's called reactive abuse. I don't really want to be around people like that. I have to be I don't want to be around people that I have to be on my guard constantly. I don't want to be around people that don't wish any good for me, that are very dismissive of me. And let's be real, people that are. These people that I discuss, because I don't, I'm not very, I don't really mingle with many people anymore. Uh, if you're anything like me, we use, I used to know the world <laughs> and its mother. And many, 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 many moons ago now, while I was still very young, because I once bitten, twice shy. You don't have to tell me too many times. I start to learn quickly. Certain, certain aspects. <laughs> I'm still learning. Don't get me wrong. But. I would move away. I move away. I move away from people that wish me harm. And I've always been. It's not that I'm all or nothing in a unreasonable sense. But if somebody is showing me, I will. I am also a person. I'll give you a chance. I'll assess things. I think it's me. I put the finger at myself. I think maybe I was just being. Maybe I'm overreacting, or maybe I misread that. And not everybody's the same. Everybody's communication style is different. So then I would still put myself in a position with people that, I, because I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, and then they would hurt me again. And then, I, and then it becomes transparent and obvious that these people are deliberately trying to hurt you, trying to upset you for whatever reason. It doesn't matter what the reason is, whether it's jealousy or that. I mean, I hate always talking about jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. I, but oftentimes it is that. It's just inescapable. Because the light that you have within you, others gravitate towards and they we're talking about people that want that light for themselves and they don't have it. So they this is why the whole world is so hung up on material items and looks and things like that, because they people want attention. People are trying to garner attention and trying to gain a following. <laughs> and. Oftentimes the people, the chosen, I'm talking to people that we call ourselves chosen ones here. God's chosen. Those that have the light of God are the real chosen ones, the born again believers in Christ. Even if you are not there yet, even if you, before you even knew about all of that, before you even knew that you were chosen, other people could see it. You had a sense of who you were, but you didn't realise it was the light of Christ, the anointing that was on your head. Remember when Samuel came and said, I need to see your sons. And he said, no, 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 it's not any of these before David even knew who he was, Samuel had already been told by the Lord who it is. So, so Samuel c could see there's none of these. They don't have that, that light that I'm seeking. There must be somebody else. And they were like, well, yeah, it's David. It can't be David. Little David, handsome, young, pretty boy, David. The one that's always out fighting lions and he's a shepherd. David. 
Man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks on the heart. So you always had this light. There was something about you that made people jealous of you. So bringing it back. A lot of us in a position where we have to, we're around these people. We have to, we are in the awkward position of having to sometimes be around these people. But it's not easy because nothing's changed. And it, apart from the tactics. So I don't want, so me personally, as much as, so what I'm discussing, the whole point of this is, where do you draw the line between forgiveness and boundaries? Where, where, because boundaries, we don't want to be in a position where we're saying, well, I'm just drawing my boundary and, you know, they've been mean to me and blah, blah, blah. And it's, and you're just making excuses and you're not trying to be forgiving and you're not giving people a chance and you're not, and you're just being actually bitter and holding on to resentment. And you're, where do we, how do we, we don't want these lines to be blurred. We, the Lord said, forgive so that you too may be forgiven. And he said about our enemies, I mean, let's be real. He said, where is the reward in being good to those that are only good to you? And he's told us that your enemies, when they ask you for your shirt, give them your coat too. That way you, your light may shine before men and they will see and know that you are my disciples. But I am talking about when all of that has been exhausted. I'm talking about when you have extended an olive branch, when you have tried to compromise. I'm talking about when you've demonstrated, when you've been humble, not haughty, when you've demonstrated love and when you've even openly broached a subject and taken onus for things that you're not even guilty of, just to find common ground, just as part of that olive branch. I'm talking about when you've, done little acts to show you know you want to move on if somebody still wants to be nasty to you during those times and, I, and i'm using that as an example because i'm drawing on my own experiences what can you do after that you see i can show you i can then i have to then i have to deal with my own feelings i'm putting myself in a position where i have to deal with my own feelings and i have to then love you from a distance i pray for you i forgive you it's an ongoing forgiveness is an ongoing act it's a willful decision that has to be made on an ongoing basis so that we don't become dismissive and hard of heart because you will be dismissed and that is the worst words you could ever hear the lord telling you depart from me you who practice lawlessness okay if the lord gives a command right let's be clear Jesus said, I came not to do away with the commandments, but to fulfill them. And they are all encompassed in this. One, love God, your father in heaven, with all your heart, mind and soul. And the second is like it. Love others as you love yourself. So in other words, God's will is for you to love others, for you to be forgiving and pliable in your heart and caring and warm and kind. But if you are those things. And you're dealing with people that hate you because of that and despise you because of that. Then what are you to do? Do you know what I say? Look to the scriptures for the answer. Jesus, when he went to these meals, from what we see, he was he would he would often call them out. He would call them out and they didn't like him for that. The only time he didn't seem to do that is when he was with his own in his circle, his disciples. That seems to be the only times that he would relax so that, that says something in itself. The people that he knew he could be around and be himself around. Secondly, are we called to break bread with people that hate us and that seek our downfall? Well, let's look at the last meal, that blessed Passover meal of where the unleavened bread was broken, where the Lord said, and he still did it. He still called it out. He said, one of you are going to betray me. And he turned to Judas and said to him go and do that which you must do quickly and Satan had entered Judas and Judas left now why why did that ha why did it happen then at that moment at the table okay it had to happen that night before Passover but why at that moment at the table why did God allow at that moment Satan to enter Judas well 
the Lord has dropped into my spirit via the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We're not called to sit down with these people and break bread with them. We're not. We have to be careful. Cain killed his brother, Abel, whose blood cried out to God from the ground because he was jealous of him. Abel didn't even do anything bad to him. He just did the right thing in the eyes of God. Think about that story. Cain was disgruntled that God did, rejected his gift. And, and because God accepted Abel's gift, Cain became jealous and killed his brother. That's not a joke. Samson, he, he trusted Delilah. He so trusted her. She must have given, I don't know what she did. <laughs> Let's not be base. Let's not be base. Let's not let's really assess this. Because repeatedly she let it she made it she made it clear that she wished him harm. And he still always sought to see the best in her and give her the benefit of the doubt. And it was his undoing. Joseph, his brothers put him in a pit and left him to die. They watched their father mourn him and they felt no remorse. And I'll tell you something else that you need to be aware of. God let them all live. <laughs> In all of these stories, God let them live. Well, I mean, think, really think about that when you're praying against your enemies. And even no matter how clever you think you are. Listen, this is harsh. I know you're within your rights to plead Psalm 35 if you wish. And you are. I'm not I'm not saying to you not to use these psalms in spiritual warfare, but not willy nilly. Be think before you do it, because God said, do not approach my throne unless you forgive your brother first. If there's anything that you hold against your brother, that they hold against you, go and make it up with them first and then come and see me. God said anyone that hates their brother from their heart is not OK with him. It matters what God's word says. However. Does that mean that you have to have a friendship and be down within yourself with someone that hates you, with someone that wishes you harm, with someone that doesn't really want to see you do well, with someone that is dangerous because they don't have that spirit in, that you have in you. They don't have that goodness. They don't because they're able. I said it in. Uh, I can't remember. I've said it in a recent word. They're able to let the sun go down on their wrath day in, day out. Their anger is not righteous. Their anger is unfounded. Their anger, they are the ones that are bitter. I'm not saying that you didn't do anything wrong. So in my example, the thing that I'm thinking of, I was foolish. I was foolish. I said something when I shouldn't have. I spoke up. I, f I walked into someone's trap. I spoke up and about something at what was seen as the wrong time, but it worked out in the one who set the trap for me. It worked out in their favour because they wanted me to walk into that trap because they wanted to eliminate me from any situations henceforth, thereafter. And they were then justified in doing so because I had spoken up about something at the wrong time. And then I was labelled as whatever they decided to label me as. And from there on in, that has been a justification for m mistreating me. And I'm going to say it again, the Lord is not pleased with that. And I have tried my best since then. Out of love. But then I realised that they don't want that there was a setup and I was placed in a position where I would react the way it was known that I would because of the type of character I am. I don't want to laugh and smile with people that don't wish me well. And if it was a thing that where we broached it and we spoke about it and we, if somebody could take accountability for their part in things and responsibility and, and because I'm not being oversensitive, I'm being wary. So my word to you is this, okay? I've opened up my heart to you today. My word is be aware, be on guard, be but make sure you're being forgiving and that you're obeying the Father. 
but you can forgive from a distance. God does not call us to walk with these people. So Joseph, Joseph was put in a pit, but he wasn't friends with them after that. It doesn't say that. He made sure they were okay. He fulfilled his duty. But anything further to that, I'll tell you, the Bible does say, beware of bad company for it corrupts good character. And that is in the New Testament too. And I know, I mean, I'm saying that because I don't dismiss the Old Testament. I love the whole entire God-breathed word of God. But the reason I say that is because a lot of people know that Jesus came and said, you have heard it was said to curse your enemies, but I tell you to bless and love your enemies. So we want to make sure we're right with Jesus, okay? Because he is the gate. He is the gate. Enter through the narrow gate. For many try to enter apart from that, and they will not. He is the Passover blood. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. He is the Passover blood. And if you don't have that anointing your door, you're in trouble. And I mean the door to you, the door to your soul. You now have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. I didn't want this to be too long. I'm going to make another part two of it. But I just hope you get the gist. You're not under any obligation to sit and dine with your enemies. Yes, the Lord will prepare a dinner in front of you for your enemies. He prepares a dinner in the presence of your enemies. That's not the same thing as sitting down and breaking bread with them and opening your heart with them and laughing and sharing a drink and letting your guard down. Do you know how many people have died on this earth for, for because of that? Do you know how many people have been have come to their end because they trusted the wrong people, laughed and joked with them and let down their guard with them? Look at how many women have perished because they made the wrong choices. There's a scripture about that in the Bible. About at the end of days and these foolish women that let just anyone into their homes. I mean, you, your body is your home. It's your temple. It's where you reside. It's where you, that's going to live forever, lives inside of this. <laughs> I love, but I choose to love when someone has shown me, and look, I have to make this clear. When someone shows you that they wish you harm, where does it end? Where does it end? Don't you know that spirits are jumping bodies right about now? They're, 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 we're living in times where the wicked, look, when I say the wicked, let me rephrase that. Anyone outside of Christ and people just doing, living wantonly and just doing whatever they want to do. Now is not the time to be doing that because we're at a certain, we're, we're, the grace period is coming to a close. This is not, this is not back in the day. People would be given, the grace would be extended. Not anymore. It's just not time to be taking chances. It's not time to be taking. There are things that I desire in this world, but I put God's will first and I will not waver on that. I put God's will first. I want to follow his way, the way he has said to do it, the way he has said to go. That's what matters to me. More than my happiness. And ultimately, that is my happiness, because one day being happy without Christ is one day in hell for me. He's my best friend. I'd have absolutely nothing of value if it wasn't for him. I love God so much. His will. I give myself to him. I want him to have his will in my and way in my life. He's my Prince Charming. <laughs> we are the bride of Christ. So while I want, so I want to please him, but he is so aware of that that he was good enough to drop into my spirit what it is I've shared with you. Don't feel obligated. I'm talking to those that feel obligated to sit down and smile and pretend with people that you are well aware hate you. And I mean hate, because again, where does it end? If these entities are jumping into people, anyone that has been happy and gloated at your at a moment in your life when you were crushed, when the most awful thing happened to you and they made sure they turned their back on you, pretended that they were busy or that they were unawares. Or anyone, anyone, that, anyone that is, anyone that is, you just, look, we don't need to go into it. There are so many different things we've all experienced. You know if someone wishes you harm or not. 
But if they've wished me harm on level one or level five, where does it end? What's to say it's not going to reach level 10? I just, I can't, I can't, I don't want to be a part of it. And like I said in my last word, this was the decision. Thank you, Jesus, because that's what he said to me. This was their decision. This was their decision. It's not that you're being unforgiving. You're just you're just saying, OK, then. If that is how you wanted it to be, then I have to then it, I have my responsibility. I love you. I've always loved you. I, I, but I have a responsibility now towards myself and towards the situations that I'm going to place myself in and the energy that I'm going to expend. I have an, um, and I have an obligation towards you as well to ensure that you're not placed in a position where you're going to be under further judgment or sin as well. So I have to navigate this differently now. And I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. As a man sows, he reaps. This is the hot, this is that you're just the, you've grown into an orange tree and you can't now become an apple tree because now they desire apples. They wanted to plant oranges. So that is what it is. The situation is now that one of an orange tree and it's not your fault. And you're trying your best to be rosy like an apple, but it's not of your doing. And as much as you can forgive them, sometimes the damage is done. The damage is done. And that there's a consequence there. I'm going to leave it there. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Jesus really loves you, believe me. Jesus is using those that are labouring for him to speak to you. I hope this I hope this helps who it was for. God bless you. I love you. Take care.